Welcome to worship, friends. I know that this week looks different from last week, but we know that gathering virtually is only temporary, and one day we will be together again. So no matter how you are joining us today, welcome. Welcome to worship. May our hearts and our minds be gathered together as we worship our Lord today. Let us join in a moment of prayer. God, we turn to you, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to be upon us. Bless us with your spirit and with your power while we are here in this place. Help us to find the peace that surpasses all understanding. Give us your calm that we can experience even in the midst of a storm. Bless us with your spirit as we gather together today. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied Within your presence I sing beneath the shadow of your wings Better is one day in your courts Better is one day your house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house
house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere thousands elsewhere one thing i ask and i would seek to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells one thing i ask and i would seek to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere and my heart and flesh cry out for you the living god your spirit's water for my soul i've tasted and i've seen come once again with me i will draw near to you i will draw near to you to you better is one day better is one day better is one day thousands elsewhere better is one day better is one day better is one day thousands elsewhere thousands elsewhere okay class today we are going to be writing about what we're thankful for for example i wrote I am thankful for my family, my dogs, my teachers, my friends, my computer, and my toys. And I am thankful for uh, mom, my family, my mom, you, daddy, Taylor, and myself. Bernie and Charlie, so, what, what are you are thankful, thankful for? for? I am thankful for belly rubs. Thanks, Walter, for rubbing my belly. My human's attention. Treats. I'm really thankful for my brother, Charlie. And I'm thankful for my humans. I am thankful for my humans. Dog food. Tasty bones. Ernie, of course. And all the time I get to play with my humans and my brother. What are you guys thankful for? For Thanksgiving, let's be thankful for all that God has done for us. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving! Thanksgiving! Good morning, this is John Pauling, one of the three J's. So by now, I'm sure that you've probably all heard that we are going to be having our first ever virtual meat raffle, which is coming up on Saturday, December 12th at 7 p.m. Now, believe it or not, that is just three short weeks away. It will be a Facebook Live event, and even though we won't be in person this year, it will be a lot of great fun and a tremendous fundraising opportunity for our church. Now, if you've not already purchased your ticket package, please do not wait. There are four convenient packages to choose from. I personally recommend package one, which is really our best value. 
With this package, you'll get three entries into all 15 rounds and the finale, plus you'll get three entries into our 50-50 draw, and you'll be entered in for a chance to win a $300 Pelicanos gift card. Now you can purchase your tickets online or you can send in a check directly to the church. If you will be paying by check, please remember that we must have your check by this Saturday, November 28th. Or if you'll be paying online, you'll have until Monday, December 7th. So don't miss out on the fun. Visit the church Facebook page today, access the event, purchase your ticket package, and get answers to any questions that you might have or feel free to reach out directly to me. I hope to see you all there virtually, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Call me, guide 
guide me, lead me, walk beside me. I give my life to the potter's hand. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes i'm captured by your holy calling set me apart i know you're drawing me to yourself lead me lord i pray take me mold me Use me, fill me, I give my life to the potter's hand. Call me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me, I give my life to the potter's hand. This morning we have two readings. Our first reading comes from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is good and it is he that made us and we are his. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good and God's steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness to all generations. And our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter. We will read verses 31 through 46. Friends, if you're ready to hear this word, will you please type in, Amen. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me and enter into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
let's join in a moment of prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for gathering us here in whatever way we can gather, gathering us around a television screen or around a computer. We just thank you for allowing us to be together so that our hearts and our minds can join together. Lord, we ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Bless the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our minds so that all that we do and all that we say can be holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Now before I dive into our readings for today, let's talk about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving started as a tradition where we eat a meal together and we remember the meal between the colonists and the natives. It began as a symbol of peace and charity, but now it has a different meaning, at least for most of us Christians. While those thoughts of tradition are still in our minds, we take the day to be thankful. And we as Christians take a moment to pause and to be thankful for all that God has provided for us. Maybe we even go around the table and we each say one thing that we are thankful for and we stop and we lift a prayer and we give thanks to God. But this year is unlike the rest because instead of a large family gathering like we might be used to, we're going to be home. Some of us might even be home alone, which will be different than any other Thanksgiving that we've ever had. So this year, Thanksgiving is not going to be the same as it is every other year. Now, in a year where we have lost so many lives, over 250,000 lives have been lost to COVID alone, we're also reminded this Thanksgiving of all the lives who are not here with us this year. The spouses and the siblings, the children and the neighbors, the parents and the grandparents, we are reminded of those who are not able to enjoy stuffing their faces with mashed potatoes and, and turkey and then having lively, loud conversations followed by family games around the table. And we're reminded of the absences that we have this year. But do you know where in our church liturgy we're called to give thanks to God? In our church liturgy for our denomination, one of the few places where we are called to give God thanksgiving is actually in our funeral liturgy. Seriously, in, in every funeral that I officiate, I say the same liturgy. I say, we gather to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of our loved ones. And that's powerful because as Christians, we know that even when our hearts grieve, we are called to give God thanks. We're called to give God thanks for the life that our loved one lived. We are called to give God thanks for the love that they shared. We are called to give God thanks for the promise of reunion with our loved ones in the kingdom of God. Even when we grieve, we as Christians are called to give God thanks. That is one of the things that makes us who worship God a bit different than others. And different, I'd say, in a very good way. We don't let our grief consume us because we're reminded to be thankful for all of the goodness that was and all of the goodness that is to come. Now, with all those thoughts of Thanksgiving in our mind, let's take a look at our readings for today. First, let's take a look at Psalm 100. That was our psalm that we read today. Now, Psalm 100 is a psalm of Thanksgiving. Now, King David, he wrote most of the psalms, and many of his psalms include verses of Thanksgiving. And then we have psalms like this, where the entire purpose of the psalm is to give God thanks. King David, who may have been the king over all of a united kingdom of Israel, still knew that even though he was king, he was a mere mortal. He knew that he was just a human being and that God was God. And so King David, as he poured his heart out to God in prayer and the writing of the Psalms, King David knew, he knew that he needed to give God thanks. He knew that God was greater than he could ever imagine. And King David knew that he needed to pause in anything that he was doing and give God thanks. He needed to pause when things were good. He even needed to pause when things were bad and just stop and give God thanks. He said, give God thanks for God is good and God's love endures forever. And now let's take a look at our gospel lesson. I want us to, to put these two together today. Let's take a look at our gospel lesson, lesson from Matthew 25. Now in Matthew 25, we learn that there's a, a final day of judgment. This is a day that was awaited by many Jewish people at the time. They would talk about the day of judgment. 
And so we learn that when there will be a final day of judgment, Jesus will look at some and Jesus will thank them. Jesus will look at those who gave food to those who were, who were hungry and, and Jesus will thank them. Jesus will look at those who gave water to those who were thirsty and Jesus will thank them. Jesus will look at those who visited those and welcomed those who, who are often alone in prison or lonely and, and Jesus will thank them. Jesus will look at those who, who gave and Jesus will thank them. And then Jesus will say, thank you, because everything that you did, you did it as if you did it to me and now enter into the kingdom of God. But then we learn that Jesus will look at those who did nothing, those who only hoarded all the toilet paper to themselves without making sure that there was any for anyone else. Jesus will look at those who, who did not share. Jesus will look at those who only cared about themselves and didn't care about anyone else. And Jesus will look at them and Jesus will say, sorry. You looked at those who were in need and you, you didn't help them. You saw those who were in need and you, you didn't have any mercy for them. So sorry, you are not able to enter into the kingdom of God. And that can be a verse that can be really hard for us as we start to think, oh my goodness, like where are our, our, our hearts? Have we done well enough? You know, what does this mean to us? And where we, we kind of fret over what that might mean to us. But I actually shared uh, something on our Facebook page, on our church Facebook page, that I think it goes exactly along with the message of this parable. I actually think that it sums up this parable perfectly. So here this is. It says, how we treat others is the ultimate test of our love for Christ. This, I think, sums up this entire parable. How we treat others is our ultimate test of our love for Christ. This parable isn't arguing about faith and works. And any person who, who has tremendous faith and, and does a lot of good works knows that there's not an argument between faith and works, but instead our actions prove our faithfulness. How we treat others will show the love that we have for Christ. How we have compassion for others will prove our love for Christ. The way that we care for others, even those who can't repay us, or especially those who can't repay us, that shows our love for Christ and our determination to follow Christ. And treating others well goes hand in hand with being thankful. These two readings go hand in hand with one another. Seriously, it's even scientific, not even just biblical, that being thankful and, and doing good to others goes hand in hand. There's even uh, proof neurologically that this is true. Neuroscientists can actually prove that gratitude and giving go hand in hand. When we do more of one, it makes us want to do more of the other. This is because part of our brain that processes gratitude and the part of our brain that processes selfless giving are in fact the same part of the brain. A neuroscientist named Christina Carnes explains this in an article that I found how the region deep in the frontal lobe of the brain called the ventromedial prefrontal cortex is key to supporting both, both gratitude and giving. So when we do one, it makes us want to do more than the other or more of the other. And the amazing thing is not only when we do one, when we're thankful, does it make us want to also be more selfless? But when we are thankful and when we are selfless, when we give selflessly, when we do those things, not only do they come from the same place, but they also make us happy. These things actually fill us with a sense of purpose. So when we do good for others and when we give thanks to God, we are encouraged to do more of each and we feel good about it. So friends, as we gather together for a Thanksgiving that's more somber than any Thanksgiving we've had before, why don't we remember to have faith in a God who is greater than our chaos? Let's remember to do good in a world where sometimes goodness seems rare. And let's give thanks to God for that which we do have. 
This Thanksgiving, let's mute everything that's negative in this world because there's far too much negativity out there. Even if it means turning off the news, especially if it means turning off unnecessary commentaries. And instead, let's give thanks to God for that which we do have and let's create more goodness in this world because we know that they go hand in hand. We know it because we learn it in our scriptures. We also know it because scientists have proved that this is the way that we are made. We are made to give thanks and to do good. And when we do those things, when we do those things that we are made to do, when we give thanks and when we do good, especially to those who cannot repay us, not only is it how our brains are wired, but it gives us a sense of joy and a sense of purpose. So let's do these things. On this Thanksgiving, as we gather together in a year that is unlike the rest, as we gather together where maybe the dining room table is more empty than we would like, as we maybe have to stay home alone, as maybe our only gathering might be that which is over Zoom, let's be thankful and let's find ways to do good in this world. Let's be thankful and let's do good Let's create good. That is how we should celebrate this Thanksgiving. And when we do that, that might make us Christians a little bit different than anybody else in the world because we'll be so filled with gratitude and we'll be so busy creating more goodness that our hearts, even if others can't explain it, might be filled with joy. So friends, on this Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for? Will you type into the chat? Will you share something that you're thankful for? Maybe you want to share ways that we can help those who are less fortunate. Let's do good. Let's be thankful and share what you, my friends, are thankful for. And let's join in a moment of prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this day. Even though this day is different than Thanksgivings that we've had in the past, we know, Lord, that you are with us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for our faith that gives us the strength that we need. We just take a moment to say thank you, Lord. Pour your Holy Spirit upon us and allow us to help those in need. This year for Thanksgiving, teach us new ways that we can do more good in this world. And we just pause to give you thanks. And we pray this and every prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Gracious God, may this act of giving transform our hearts and our minds. May you bless these gifts and use them to do your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hill where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I want out dear, I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, and lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross.
you were as I, tempted and tried. Human, the Word became flesh, bore my sin and death. Now you're risen, and everything I once held dear, I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross, to your heart, to your heart. Lead me to your heart, lead me to your heart. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. Now, friends, go forth with the blessing of God. Go forth with the love of Christ. Go forth, be thankful, be blessed, and be a blessing to all.